Welcome to another video. I am the Starman. Now in the last video I did say that I was going to be looking at portable tracking mounts. Now if you want to take pictures of the night sky and you've got you've just got a camera and a tripod you are limited to the length of exposure that you can use. There is a rule it's called the 500 rule. Now if you're if you want to take a, a, mil, a really nice Milky Way photo say you've got a 24 millimeter lens what you need to do with the 500 rule is you need to divide 500 by your focal length of your lens. So in the case of a 24 millimeter lens, that comes out at about 21. So what you would say is that 20 seconds. Um, and that would give you a photograph where your stars will not look like trails. If you go too long, uh, what can happen is you can get star trailing, very obvious star trailing. So that's not really what you want. So you are a little bit limited if you've just got a camera and a tripod. Um, you can do it. I do it quite a lot. I, I, but you do need um, a fairly fast lens, I would say. You need a lens that is at least an aperture of f2.8. So um, you can get some cheap lenses, cheap Samyang lenses. Samyang do them f2.8 or even faster than that. You go down to f f1.4 some of them so the faster the lens the more likely you can get a shot using a not not such a long shutter speed that's going to give you star trails so like i said 24 millimeter goes into 500 20 times roughly so that that tells you that you shouldn't be exposing for longer than 20 seconds now i tend to go a bit less than that even i tend to go down to 15 seconds i'm using a 24 millimeter f2 all my lenses are f2.8 apart from a 50 which would go down to f1.8 in the case of a 50 millimeter you're looking at 10 seconds because 50 goes into 510 times so uh, that's your limits if you're not using one of these things now these things do open up a whole new uh, possibility to expose for a whole lot longer uh, this is a portable star tracker uh, this one here is a 4 x 10 light track 2. This is my own star tracker. So a bit later in this video, I'm going to be setting this one up from the ground up, showing you how to set it up. These allow you to take exposures in minutes. So you can take an exposure, a wide exposure of the Milky Way. You can take it for 5, 10 minutes and the amount of detail you get is, is amazing. It, it does depend where you are, of course. I mean, if you're in the middle of a, a town, you're just going to get orange it's not going to be very good you do need to be somewhere dark but anyway this is the sort of thing you need if you want to do really long exposures of the night sky so i'm just going to have a look at another couple of examples now um there's a few there's quite a lot of these on the market um now these ones here i think are all discontinued now so if you want to get into it you don't need to buy a brand new one you could buy a second hand one this one in particular is a ioptron sky tracker this is one going back a few years now i'm sure there's a few of these on ebay and uh, they all kind of work in the same way what you have to do is you put these on the tripod uh, in this case this is the what you put on the tripod this contraption here on the bottom and once you've done that you then take the polar scope and in this case the case of this one the polar scope goes through there like that tighten that thing up there and then you point that, you point the polyscope towards the North Star. And once that's been done, you can then take a ball head and you put it onto this thing here. And then if we, uh, I'll be taking a closer look at this a little bit later on as well, by the way. Uh, you put it on there and that thing there will then, once you turn the thing on on the back, will then start to track the sky. So that is how that one works. Now then, this is a very popular one here. This is a Skywatcher Star Advent. These have all been very kindly lent to me, by the way. This particular one here was lent to me by a friend from Preston and District Astronomical Society, or PADAS, should I say. <coughs> so if you're in the area of Preston, go down and check them out. Um, this one here was lent to me by one of my own, uh, from my own society, Blackpool and District uh, Astronomical Society, or Badass. Uh, this is a Skywatcher um, Star Adventure. 
and a little bit more substantial this one actually um it's got the the thing there which attaches to your tripod this is a regular tripod so this is your wedge where you you can maneuver it to get your polar alignment yeah the polar scope is inside here so you look through the you look through the polar scope from down there so you align it by looking through there so this is your the way that you align it um this thing here there's a gap in there so that you can see through the polar scope this this does have a weight system on it for carrying um, a heavy camera and possibly a telescope um, so that that weight system this weight system here just helps it helps to keep the mount balanced you can use them without the weight system but uh, i think sometimes it does help if you've got that on just to balance it if, you, if you've got a telescope on it um, it can sort of swing to one side so this can help you to balance it so it doesn't do that so that's the uh, Skywatcher Star Adventurer and now I'll be taking a closer look at these right okay so let's take a closer look at the um, Skywatcher Star Adventurer mount um, so like I say this is the um, the wedge that goes on top of your tripod uh, this allows you to move the thing up and down so that you can get your polar alignment you look straight through there you want to get the pole star lined up on this axis here um, and there are a few buttons on it for, for different features you can do time lapses and all sorts of things there's even a port there for auto guiding which I'm not going to go into now but that's something that enables you to get more accurate tracking um, it also has different um, modes as well you can do full tracking mode you can also do a half tracking mode there's all these there's different options um i i tend to not use these i just tend to use the mount in the in the uh, the normal tracking mode i don't don't go into all these half tra they're sort of the half tracking mode is for doing landscapes where you want the you want a bit of both you kind of want to eliminate the star trails but at the same time you you you're going to get the landscape showing a little bit of blur but it, it's sort of like a half waypoint it's uh, for me i would rather just track the sky and then blend the the blender landscape in later but anyway that's a closer look at the sky watcher star adventure mount a very good mount don't think they make it like this anymore it's probably been upgraded to a, a new model um, but there's, there's plenty of these on um, ebay i'm sure second hand Okay, so we're now looking at the uh, Ioptron Sky Tracker. Uh, this is getting on a bit. This mount now, it's uh, not for sale anymore. Uh, but like I said, there's a few of these available on eBay. I'll just put the polar scope in. The polar scope goes in here like that. You align that with the North Star. I'll just tighten that up. Um, you put your camera on top of here. This little thing, turntable here, will then turn around to track the stars the sky um yeah small it's small it's quite heavy actually it's got the the wedge built in as well which is quite handy um so that's uh, the ioptron sky tracker okay so here's a closer look at my four nights 10 light track 2 mount um like the other ones it has lots of options on it you can track in all these different modes sidereal is the main mode that's the one that tracks the stars they also have solar tracking mode and lunar which i don't i mean they do track at different speeds but for me i don't bother with it and the half tracking mode as well i just use side sidereal mode side real side area, however you say that i don't know how to say it. northern hemisphere southern hemisphere the tracker will move a different way for each hemisphere uh, these two buttons here are just for setting up the arm for tracking on the back this is a polar arm by the way where you put your polar scope you put your polar scope through there um slightly different to the other ones also this one has no wedge on it like the other ones do so what i have to do is i have to put this on a regular tripod using a a, a, a normal um tripod head which i'll show you in the next scene uh, on the back we have the on-off switch here plug this one in doesn't take batteries this one uh, and there's also an auto guide port as well there like on the other one and that's for more accurate tracking it's something that you can do if you want to put a long a big telescope on or something like that and you need more accurate 
tracking but um, it's there if you want it but for me I don't know I just think it complicates things a bit too much so anyway I'm now going to set this up now from the ground up and show you how to set it up and uh, stick a camera on it and get ready for tracking the night sky okay so I'm now going to show how to set up the Fornax light track 2 on a regular tripod and head okay so the first thing I need to do is to put a quick release plate on this is an Arca Swiss style quick release plate which fits onto my tripod head so that's the quick release plate on and now I'm going to put the tripod head on now this is quite an important feature this is actually a geared tripod head uh, it's a Benro GD3 WH they're also made by other brands but this is a very very good brand I really do like this geared head and these are very important because when you're trying to align polar align your mount with the North Star it's very important that you have a head that allows you precise movement and these heads do that because they have these knobs here where you can you can turn that way and you can turn the head up and down this is quite important for getting the angle for the North Star which is fairly steep um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tilt that that way like that which is pretty much where it would normally be and then I'm going to get the mount and because it's already got the plate on it that will just go into there like that or should do and now I'll uh, tighten that up hopefully that's on now that's on now then what you would do is you would swing out the polar arm okay so now I'm going to put the polar scope in you can use the scope to point it at the North Star and then you use these to actually find it and you should be able to find it because it is fairly bright in the sky if you know roughly where to look you just use your up and down there and your left and right to line it up so it's in there and it does need to be in a particular place in the scope as well but that's roughly how you set up the mount there uh, I'm now going to put the um, the ball head on so the final piece the final piece now is the ball head that's the last bit that you have to attach before you actually put your camera on so your ball head goes on like that and then all you have to do then is I'll, I'll, I'll show you might as well show you while I'm at it okay so the final piece of the puzzle is the camera the most important bit don't forget the camera so that's it put the camera on there you're polar aligned if you are polar aligned by using the dials to get your declination and your azimuth by using these to find the pole star camera sits on there point it where you want point it over there over here just move it around doesn't matter it's going to track um, and that's it all set up and ready okay so that wraps up my video for setting up star trackers so now in the next video you won't want to miss it i'm going to be actually using the tracker at night uh, i'm going to be doing best to show how i uh, find targets and take them i'll be taking pictures like uh, the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is a brilliant target. Um, it's the sort of thing, it's a great target to um, image at this time of year. It's just coming up high into the sky. And there's loads of other things that you can image up there as well. And what I want to try and do is keep it as simple as possible. Try and do things in single shots. I'm not going to be doing anything um, out of the way like stacking. I might get into stacking later on, but for now, for the time being, I'm just going to be showing what's possible just using a normal camera and a telephoto lens and, and one of these trackers. So look forward to that in the next video and I'll see you then.